For over a century, Penn State and Pitt made up one of college football's great rivalries. It was put to rest for 16 years, but thankfully brought back last season with a classic. Now they go at it again, the in-state rivals on the home turf of one of the top teams in the land. Thrilled you're with us as you're watching the Big Ten on ABC. Joe Tessitore, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe with you here at Beaver Stadium for fourth-ranked Penn State for the 98th time in the grand history of Nittany Lion football, taking on the Pitt Panthers. You know, a year ago, Pitt got the best of them. Of course, Penn State went on to win the Big Ten, playing an all-time classic Rose Bowl and put forth now one of the best players in the country in Saquon Barkley. Penn State, the third hit will receive, and the dangerous Quadre Henderson will be back to field the Tyler Davis hit. drive fielded at about the two and good coverage that time as Henderson is taken down You're with us here, Joe Tessitore, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe here at Beaver Stadium as Quadre Olison takes the first carry of the game for the Pitt Panthers. Well, this is one of those great rivalries that went away with conference realignment, but so glad to see it back last year after a 16-year hiatus, the in-state rivals back to business, Todd. Uh, it's great for me to see. It's great for me to see these vintage pit uniforms, too. This is the color scheme that I remember from playing in this great series. Second and seven. Brown gets it to Henderson, the All-American return man. If you're familiar with the name Max Brown, good reason. You remember him from a year ago at USC. He's now a grad transfer. When he came out of high school, he's the number one pocket passer prospect in the country. Went to play for the Trojans was their team captain. You know what happened with Sam Darnold taking over, comes here to Pitt, voted a team captain, back-to-back -back years, different schools. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, he's really hoping, and I'm hoping for the kid that he found a happy landing place here in Pittsburgh. Third and two. Wilson the lone back. He will get ahead and short of that line to make. Pittsburgh last year in this ball game, the thrilling win at Heinz Field. That marking that for a first down, Todd. Ran for 343 yards. There's a new offensive coordinator in place in Sean Watson replacing Matt Canada, but they have maintained the same offense, philosophy, scheme, and everything in that first first down. Very important. They want to control the game with their running game if they can. A very experienced offensive line. Play action, Brown taking a shot downfield, and it is intercepted! That is Grant Haley on the return, weaving his way inside the 20, and a flag is down at the 21-yard line as Haley comes up with the pick. We will check on the flag. Well, the ball really sailed on Max Brown as we wait for the penalty, holding on Pitt, it'll be declined. The ball sailed on Max Brown, and the receiver didn't even think it was intended for him. Watch the end of this throw. Pretty good protection. The ball sails high, and the intended receiver, Henderson, didn't even reach his arms up. He thought the ball was being thrown to somebody behind him, and an easy interception to start the game for Penn State. 
Guy who had the block field goal return for a touchdown in that upset of Ohio State with a 39-yard interception return to get the day started here. Of course, some of the best playmakers in all of college football lining up for Penn State, putting that guy, the top Heisman contender, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, he's out in the slot right now. Normally lines up next to Trace McSorley, but the combination of McSorley at quarterback, Saquon Barkley, your running back, and Mike Gusecki, Gusecki, the tight end, those are three of the premier players, not just in the Big Ten, but in all of college football. And when you get in this part of the field, they all have to be accounted for. First and goal after the turnover, as Barkley comes back into the backfield. Quick pass, quick score, Mike Gusecki from Trace McSorley. The star linebacker for Pittsburgh, who their coaches says has to play well today. Idowu got his eyes on Barkley and did, took his eyes off of Gasicki and Penn State on the board easily and quickly. Davis has the extra point. And the Nittany Lions roar early here at home. Mike Sorley, last year's Big Ten Championship game MVP. Money for James Franklin in the game. ABC presented by Walmart. Absolutely beautiful day here in University Park, Pennsylvania. And as good of a start as you can get for the home team, fourth ranked Penn State, as Mike Gasicki caught the touchdown pass on their first offensive play of the game. Here's Henderson again on the return. And again, good coverage by the Nittany Lions. Ball State has our all hands in play. Penn State's offense loves to put defenders in conflict. So they're going to take these two key players, and the guy that's going to get put in conflict is right here. Sean Idowu, he got his eyes on the back. He forgot the tight end that slipped behind him. You put that one guy in a position where he has to choose, and in that case, he chose wrong, and Trace McSorley got the touchdown. Coordinator Joe Moorhead for Penn State talks about all these different level RPOs. An example of it there with the tight end. Now they will stay on the ground here, Will Pitt, as they come with Maddox into the game on the carry. That's the kind of action that Pitt really caused some problems for Penn State a year ago, as there's a Pitt player down at the end of the play. And that is their starting tailback, Quadri Allison. Wilson celebrated his 21st birthday yesterday, coming off a good effort and that win against Youngstown State. And of course, with James Conner moving on to the NFL, this is a young man that they really wanted to lean on this season. He's a big back, 230 pounds. We had a chance to visit with him yesterday at their hotel. Looks to be okay. He was actually out leading as a blocker on that play because it was that jet sweep action or arc sweep action. They like to combine running inside with their big backs and then running the receiver Henderson on the sweep action to attack the perimeter. There's Darren Hall who comes in at running back now with Olison off on the sideline being tended to. Second down and nine. And nothing on the inside with Hall as Parker, Cothran, and the rest of that group was able to find him. When these two teams played a year ago, we had some of the Penn State players and even Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator, said we weren't prepared for the speed and the tempo of their operation. What Pitt does on offense, they like to shift and trade with their tight ends and then bring motion. And they were doing that at such a high level of efficiency that Penn State had problems getting set. So far in this ball game, they look much more tuned in to this kind of offense. 
Third and nine, Brown. Threw it to the outside and incomplete as he was looking for Reuben Flowers. A catchable ball, but excellent coverage by Flowers on the outside. DeAndre Tompkins back to return the Ryan Winslow punt. Tompkins took one back. 61 yards for a touchdown a week ago. This time we'll be calling for the fair catch just beyond the 40-yard line. So Saquon Barkley, 5'11", 230 pounds, and he's got great lineage in sports. His uncle was Iran the Blade Barkley, three-division world champion boxing, and he is an absolute weight room warrior time. Well, he's got such a unique combination of breakaway speed and then power and strength. And what all great running backs have is vision. And he, he is the complete package. Averaged over 12 yards a carry in their week one win. Here he goes just muscling ahead out to the 45-yard line, met by Brightwell. You have to have tremendous gap consistency and integrity when you play against him. You can't miss an assignment. You can't go to the wrong gap because he has that ability to take it all the way for a touchdown every time he touches it. And sorely on second and seven. That was thrown high into the outside to Gasicki. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, Quadri Olison, the starting running back for Pitt, is being tended to on the sideline. They've taken off his jersey and his pads, and they are wrapping in an ace bandage, that left shoulder and chest area. He kept trying to catch his breath, take some water. Looks like he may be able to return to this game. We're going to need his reliable work in the offensive backfield. Pittsburgh is a... Primarily a quarters coverage team. That's the same philosophy Pat Narduzzi had as the coordinator at Michigan State. Third and seven, McSorley tried to go on a crossing pattern underneath to Johnson, but it was overthrown, so Penn State will be punting away. Good disguise of the coverage. They showed quarters. They had to press coverage on the outside. It always looks like man-to-man. -man. And then Pittsburgh dropped into a zone on that play and forced the errant throw by McSorley. Now this is an aspect of the game that James Franklin wants to key in on. Playing keep away from that guy, number 10, with this guy's leg, Blake Gilligan. Gilligan tried a directional punt here outside the numbers. Don't want to offer anything up to Henderson as he's forced to the fair catch at about the 18. Up a touchdown is the home team on a beautiful day here. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart, save money, live better. Well, some great names through the years that have played in this rivalry, Tony Dorsett and Capaletti, the Heisman winner. And how about that guy right there? <laughs> well, number 14 yeah. uniform hasn't changed much Not here much. in state college. Feels good to have these guys back out on the field. Uh, things yeah. need to feel a little better for Pitt quarterback Max Brown. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that he's got to block out that interception. And even that last throw, he looked a little hesitant yeah. to me. He's got to go ahead and cut it loose. This is a good Penn State defense. They're a fast reacting defense. But he has to play well. He's going to have to hit some throws down the field for them to have a chance in this ball game. So shake off those first two throws and really start to try to drive that football in. Of course, Max Brown a year ago was the starting quarterback at USC before giving way to the current Heisman contender, Sam Darnold. Arrived to Pitt in January. Wanted to assimilate as soon as possible. And he was voted a team captain. Darren Hall still in at running back with the injury to Olison, and he finds a nice hole on the left side. I mentioned earlier, last year in the game in Pittsburgh, James Conner had 117 yards rushing, but as a team, the Panthers ran for 343 yards. They didn't have to throw the ball 
very much at all. Even though Nate Peterson threw three touchdown passes, it was all set up by a dominant run game. I don't know that they'll have the same kind of success this year. That's why I think Max Brown has to play a much bigger role from the quarterback position. Second and three. Brown able to handle that. And then gets it complete to a Rojo Lopes for a first down for the Panthers. Good composure by Max Brown. First of all, picking the ball off the ground after the snap. And that's a throw that he stepped into and drove. Watch. Picks the ball up, keeps his focus downfield, and drives a nice ball in between the numbers for a first down. 21-yard reception. Hall tried to spin free and able to gain a yard. Let's go to the studio and check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Another heated in-state rivalry on a day filled with great big marquee games in college football. So looking forward to tonight with all the action. Second and nine. That's Shantez Moss now flanking Brown. As he's going to test it downfield. And a tremendous effort, but unable to hold on through the process of the catch was Wea. Well, we actually pushed off at the last minute and did not get flagged for it and just wasn't able to complete the catch. We is the guy that caught the touchdown in overtime last week. Watch him push off right at the end, but he's not able to secure the catch. Good throw by Max Brown over the outside shoulder, and that's a ball that needs to be caught. That was Amani Oruwarie in coverage. So it leaves him with a third and nine. You only get so many chances to hit those big shot plays down the field. And when you're on the road, you got to capitalize. That was a missed opportunity for Pitt. Have to call timeout because the play clock was down. This timeout call came from the sideline. Timeout. Pittsburgh, their first timeout of the half. Max Brown and timeout. Pitt facing a third and nine when we return. Number five Oklahoma against second ranked Ohio State. Coverage is going to get going at 7.30 right here on ABC. The matchup of the quarterbacks Mayfield and JT Barrett. Number one and two among active players and touchdowns responsible for. Should be a great one. This a third and nine after the timeout for Pitt. Here's pressure now from Penn State defense and they're able to get to Max Brown. It was Grant Haley. Had the interception earlier and now the sack on third down. Well, and this is the difference not having your starting tailback in Quadri Olison. This is Shantez Moss, number 26. Watch, he's late picking up the blitz. They had everybody accounted for, but he's late getting to Haley and Haley gets to Max Brown for the sack. Shantez Moss didn't even play last week, and he made a big mistake there on third down. So Winslow into punt again. As Tompkins fields it all the way back at the 20. And tripped up after a pretty nifty return. And a big boot from Ryan Winslow. Holly. The Penn State quarterback Trace McSorry is older than his years. He actually started eighth grade, went through eighth grade until December, and then decided to reclassify because he was one of the youngest kids in the class. So he and his mom in December took a trip to Costa Rica. They went and lived with a local family for a month, did a total immersion Spanish program. He had the time of his life, and he said learning a new culture at such a young age has made him able to communicate with people of many different types reclassified so he's a little bit older now for this Penn State football team. What a great life experience that was for him. Talked about that with us yesterday. Here's a delayed handoff to Barkley as he's able to carry defenders for about five extra yards. That was Dwayne Hendricks going for a ride on Barkley. Yeah you see the lower body strength 
of Saquon Barkley. He is just a difficult guy to get on the ground, particularly for safeties or cornerbacks. That's why your big bodies have to do most of the tackling against Saquon Barkley. Now he motions out on second and two as they quickly get it to him. A lot of traffic there as Avante Maddox came up from that corner position. That was really an outstanding play by Avante Maddox because not only did he make the tackle, but he maintained leverage. He fought off the block and maintained outside leverage so Barkley couldn't get around him. Watch number 14, shed the block, but stay outside and wait for help to come. That was outstanding work by Maddox. And because of it, a third and two. Nick Sorley on the quarterback run, hits a seam, and look at him go! Trace McSorley, jump play, Penn State. Well, just one little false step. Watch the linebacker right here. A little false step inside. You avoided the area. You're so concerned about Saquon Barkley in that situation. And Trace McSorley, who ran it well last week against Akron. Pat, Pat Narduzzi said, I was shocked how many times Trace ran the ball last week in the opening game. But he told us yesterday he wants to be more of a factor in the Penn State run game this season. I love that look of Barkley sealing that hole for the 35-yard run from his quarterback. And now McSorley trying to extend the play, and he will throw it away as Dwayne Hendricks was getting after him. Now what Joe Moorhead, the offensive coordinator, has done with this offense, it's been really remarkable to watch. It took them about four or five games last year to really hit their stride and find their identity. But from that point on in their nine-game winning streak, they were playing as good offensively as anybody in college football last year. They get to the line quick and get set. Then that look over from McSorley and Barkley. Second down here. Saquon. About three yards there. And Holly Joe Moorhead means a lot for him to be playing against Pitt. He's a Pitt guy. Well, that's right. He went up to the famed Central Catholic High School when he was a kid. He said, I remember parking in that lot and walking to the Pitt games with my brother when I was little. He did coach at Pitt briefly for two years, but now here he is as the offensive coordinator at Penn State. But his dad, Merv, who worked in a coal mine in Pittsburgh for 35, or excuse me, a steel mill for 35 years in Pittsburgh, is here in the stands. And he says, my cousins are here, too. They parked their RV in my parking in my front yard. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, my front lawn yesterday. I got images of Cousin Eddie yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. In a bathrobe and boots. Yeah. Offside, defense, number 23. Five-yard penalty, third down. Boy, costly mistake. You have them backed up on third down. And now you give them five free yards. Now you put them in that same situation they were in a little bit ago. This could be a Barkley run. It could be a McSorley run. You've got all kind of options at third and short after that five-yard penalty. There's the guy that will choose one of those options. Penn State's outstanding offensive coordinator, the Pittsburgh native. Third and two. And don't forget about Gasecki. And here he is on another RPO, picking up the block and into the end zone. DeAndre Tompkins paving the way with the block there. Just so dangerous. So, so many weapons. Gesicki's going to come across. Looks like he's going to block for the run. That's an RPO. The offensive line was blocking run, and that's Trace McSorley reading it with Gesicki and turning it into a touching touchdown pass. We talk so much about McSorley and Barkley, but what a weapon they have with the All-America candidate at tight end, Mike Gesicki. the top pro prospects at tight end Mike Gesicki already two touchdowns today they had two a week ago as well only had five last year so here's what makes it so dangerous here's Gesicki if you're gonna run the zone he's usually gonna block right there 
you fake to Barkley, and then instead of blocking by the tight end, he slips out. Again, you put a defender in a bind. In this case, they put that outside linebacker, number 40, in a total bind. He didn't know whether to go against the run, guard the pass. McSorley made the right read, and Penn State with their second touchdown. Line drive that goes for the touchback. So Mike Gasicki, such a great athlete, and in addition to being one of the nation's most highly touted tight end prospects when he came out, this guy was McDonald's All-American. Come on, some dunk contest, Blackwoods. Look at this. Hey, you're a high school basketball yeah. coach. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he has any eligibility left. <laughs> but not only that, he was stellar in volleyball, too. In fact, he set the high school records for receiving yards, point totals in basketball, and kills. And now a preseason All-American first team tight end for the Nittany Lions. Two touchdowns today for Mike Gesicki. Olsen back in the game and running back for Pitt as Henderson has nowhere to go. They love the jet motion to try to get him into space, but there was no space with Koa Farmer tracking and Torrence Brown in action. Uh, again, I can't say enough how, how much more prepared Penn State's defense looks for this offense and this system than they were a year ago. Brent Pride told us, says, you know, we were, we just weren't really well prepared for how fast they were going to execute. They didn't show very much in week one. Well, what a difference a year makes for this Penn State defense. They are locked in and playing with great leverage and speed. Last year, they gave up 341 rushing yards to pick. Second and 12. Brown steps up, going to tuck, tried to make a move, but unable to get past Manny Bowen. Last year, Penn State had so many injury issues at different times to their linebacking core in particular. Right now, a full healthy group. Jason Cabinda, their leader, their signal caller in the middle. Manny Bowen and Cole Farmer, who we've already mentioned on plays. Very solid front seven. Third and eight. Brown underneath at the line of scrimmage. Wea tripped up as he tries to get to that mark. It'll depend on the spot. It's going to be very close. Now they're giving it to him. It's a really excellent second effort by Wea. It's a fine looking athlete is Jester Wea, the 6'3", 210 pound senior from Madison, Wisconsin, who had the game winning touchdown catch last week in overtime to take out Youngstown State. Here's Olison. Picks up the block. One cut back to the 40. See, with a 14-point deficit, Pitt doesn't have to panic. They don't have to lose their game plan, which is to try to run the football, control the ball. The game is still within reach, so they don't have to abandon what they wanted to do. But points soon are going to be very important for them. Double stack as they went with the receiver screen to French. You saw the hesitation there as the defensive back jumped it, Todd. Yeah. yeah, good patience that time. To convert the first down, Max Brown knew better than to throw it right away. And another conversion and a new set of downs for the Pittsburgh offense. Still going to need to attack downfield. Off of their running game, if they can run with the, some success, then the play-action pass with good max protection gives you a chance to throw it deeper down the field. Only 12 yards rushing so far today for Pitt. A little shovel forward that time to Flanagan, the tight end. See, this is the same offense that Pitt ran last year with Matt Canada, who is now the offensive coordinator at LSU. Sean Watson said that he kind of watched what Matt was doing when he was at Wisconsin. He kind of really liked the offense, tracked it, was following it, and when he took the job here, there was so much already in place, and they were so successful the year before that they just stayed with it. And look at the offensive coordinator change under Narduzzi. Of course, you mentioned Canada now at LSU, Jim Chaney down at Georgia. 
Second four as Moss doesn't have much at all. You know, you talk about the coordinator change under Narduzzi. How about for Max Brown? He had a different coordinator every year he was at USC. He comes to Pittsburgh and he has a different offensive coordinator. He thinks that's been an advantage because he's he's learned a lot of football from a lot of different outstanding coaches. But I think there's a place for continuity and consistency, too, if you're a quarterback. He goes Kiffin, Sarkeesian, Clay Helton, T. Martin, and now Sean Watson here as a grad transfer for Pitt. Third down and three. Moss, patient, extra effort should earn him the first down. Sean Tez Moss, the sophomore who was injured and out a week ago. They're glad to have him back, especially with Olsen being injured earlier. Yeah, that was a strong run. Good second effort run. He got his shoulders going north and south and then just kept driving the legs. 210 pounder out of Cleveland, Ohio. Played at Bedford High School. As he will stay in here, fresh set of downs. Play action. And as they drag it across at the line of scrimmage, and this time we are able to keep his balance somehow getting out of the block of Koa Farmer. Uh, Farmer was there and had a pretty good position to make the tackle, but he didn't get him all the way to the ground. Wea did a nice job of maintaining his balance on top of Farmer without a knee coming down, it appears. Got his hand on the ground, popped back up, and turned it into a better game. That's, I mean, you just don't coach that kind of play. Outstanding effort. down to the end of this first quarter as Moss will take us to double zeros as Mike Gasicki with two touchdowns for Penn State 14 to nothing Nittany Lions college football presented by Walmart will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations ABC is presented by Walmart on a glorious day here at State College. Joe Tessitore, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe with you as the number four team in the country is up two touchdowns. Start the second quarter. It'll be the 11th play of the drive for the Pitt Panthers as they'll be facing a third and one. It only shows up as 20 yards rushing for Pittsburgh in that first quarter because of the sacks, but an impressive drive here with good balance. Moss, penetration in the backfield, and he's going to be pushed back. Miller and Cochran the first to get there, and then Haley cleaning things up. Well, we already saw him convert on a play similar to that with second effort. I think Pat Narduzzi might go for this one. And I think the benefit of having the break at the end of the first quarter Able to take the time, talk things over, maybe already have a second play in to consider as yeah. they make a personnel shift, shift and go from three tight ends to two backs. Yeah. As Olison and Hall check in here Olison. on fourth and one. Olison, your bigger back, your more experienced back, and he is in a fullback position right now as a lead blocker. They give underneath to Olison. And he is able to convert. Good looking play call from Sean Watson. They always have that threat of attacking the perimeter with a sweep action. They put Olison in that wing position and handed him the football, and he was able to get the first down. Nice little change of formation and the use of the two backs to convert on fourth down. A couple years ago, he was the ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year. That was the season when James Conner was out, and Olison rushed for over 1,000 yards. About time for the other Quadri to become a factor. Number 10, Quadri Henderson. Here he is in motion, play action off of it. Pressure again on Brown. Sharif Miller with a sack. Yeah, they're trying to pull the left guard. Alex Officer right here to pick up that defensive end. He just isn't there quick enough. Good speed off the edge by Sharif Miller. And he goes right around the most experienced lineman on this pit front. Alex Officer making his 38th career start today, but that time just not quick enough to pick up Sharif Miller. 
Second and 17. And this and time he moves. In. Yeah, I think it's the same guy, Alex Officer, who was a little early on that snap, was going to be pulling out in front of that play. Full start offense on both guards. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, what once was a very promising offensive drive and possession, now all of a sudden getting more difficult for Pittsburgh. Back to back negative plays, one on a sack and one on a penalty. And right now, if you're Max Brown, you're thinking on this kind of second down and very long, just get part of the yardage back. Give yourself a chance on third down. Brown, he overthrew Maurice French. It'll be third and 22, Holly. Well, a few crucial mistakes for this pit offense on this drive, and keep this in mind, guys, a huge rivalry game, but it was just renewed last year. This is the first time any of these pit players have played here at Penn State. It was 18 years ago, the last time the Panthers played in this stadium. Most of these kids were two or three years old, so 106,000 people. It can be a little noisy down here, and it's pretty loud right now on the field. A few mistakes costing them right now. And that's the truth. Got a local feel, too. Look at all the players from Pennsylvania playing in this game. Third and 22. Brown with time over the middle. And Chris Clark had it for a moment, but then Marcus Allen came in incomplete. Marcus Allen is a big safety and a big hitter at 6'2", 207 pounds. The senior has played a lot of football, and he just times his hit perfectly because this is a well-thrown ball, would have been a big completion, but Marcus Allen with the hit right as the ball arrived, and Chris Clark not able to secure the catch. So Winslow will try to pin inside the 10. Fair caught right around it. Already. A good start for the Penn State offense. This guy's used to it. Trace McSorley, he knows how to celebrate. He's got that home run swing. A little pop to the bat for Trace McSorley. It's together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And today, all State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. We thank them for that. Today, the guy I would expect to see Penn State try to get involved in this possession. Deshaun Hamilton, their top receiver here in the slot. Kosicki is involved. Barkley's involved. Hamilton is up next. McSorley, as he gets it out to Hamilton. I tell you, we've talked all weekend, Joe. I'm not so sure that there is anybody else in college football that has a better collection of skill talent than this team does. And when you combine Barkley and Gesicki, who may be the, when they do go in the NFL draft, may be the first players at their position taken. McSorley, the competitor and the what he's done. And then this group of wideouts that is impressive. They are a physical, long, lean, athletic bunch Lots of ways to attack a defense. Completely agree. Second and four. And there's an example of it. Hamilton again. Nice cut to get extra yardage. Deshaun Hamilton, who came in 15 catches away from breaking the school career reception record. See, as soon as Trace McSorley sees that they have a extra defenders committed to the box to stop the run, he knows he has one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside. And then they just make that decision to throw where they have the one-on-one -on -one matchup that's in their favor. That was Alan Edwards trying to get after Trace McSorley. Boy, he had Saquon Barkley coming out of the backfield, up the middle of the field, uncovered. If he would have been able to maintain the pocket, watch 26 run right down the middle. He's wide open, but McSorley had to leave the pocket. 
When you play this type of a defense, that third receiver to the field side, to the strong side, sometimes get lost. And that time, Barkley was lost and wide open. Second and 10. And for a moment there, flashing open was Jonathan Hollins. It'll be third and 10. Flag is down. We will check on that. It's like a hold. Oh, that'll back him up. Now, what do you do here? Do you do you decline the penalty and go third and 10, or do you back him up and make it second and longer? I got to tell you, honestly. Holding, Holding. offense, Holding. number 52. Penalty is declined. Third down. I want to have as few opportunities yeah. as possible. Yeah, few, on the pit limit defense, the limit, limit the opportunities yeah, for I all agree. that skill on the Penn State side. Lots of substitutions now in the third down package for Pittsburgh. A lot of times what they do in their third down, they'll put two defensive linemen down, and then they have two or three guys standing up and moving around trying to create confusion for that offensive line and their pass protection. That's what you see right here. Two guys down and a bunch of other guys crowding the line of scrimmage. They could rush or they could all flutter out and drop into coverage. Third and 10. McSorley pressure right up the middle. As he throws it at the line of scrimmage, Pitt defense did a real good job that time. Yeah, they, they got, brought pressure. They forced McSorley out of the pocket. Well-designed pressure. And a good stop on third down. Good decision to decline the penalty. Here comes the pressure. Actually, Barkley didn't do a very good job picking up Adowu, who is rushing. And McSorley had to get rid of the football. Now, Gilligan's got to be real careful here to not put it in the hands of Henderson with a returnable punt. He's going to try to get outside those numbers. As Henderson's going to come all the way to this side. Great coverage that time to stay with him and track him down at the 15. Nick Scott on punt coverage for the Nittany Lions. Hit offense back out there when we come back. College Football on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. And Nissan, innovation that excites. Well, the Penn State Berkey Creamery has been around for over 150 years. And for the last 39, Todd Blackledge has been consuming a lot of their ice cream. I have about four of those bags right yeah. there. <laughs> that you usually fill up before I leave. WPSU Coffee Break is my favorite. Coffee ice cream with some chocolate chips. Home team up. Two touchdowns here. Hit back on offense. You know, James Franklin said something to us yesterday that he thought the most improved aspect of his team last year was special teams and their depth and their coverage units is so much better. We've seen tremendous kick coverage so far in this ball game from Penn State. Especially there moments ago after that line drive directional punt. Here's a shovel straight ahead that time. As they went underneath to the tight end again, Flanagan. The strength of the Penn State defense is in their front. They've got depth, they've got speed. Where's James Franklin? Last year's Big Ten Coach of the Year has always been considered an outstanding recruiter. Their depth, their numbers are kind of back in order where they need to be at this point. Second and five. Brown with time and gets it complete. That was a good look to Aaron Matthews and a first down for Pitt. It's a run-looking formation. Two tight ends, you keep both tight ends in to block, and it's single coverage on the outside and a good throw and catch. Audrey Henderson checks in now as Matthews will run off. Of course, Henderson is such a dangerous weapon in so many ways out there. Pittsburgh just can't hurt themselves anymore here in this first half with sacks or careless penalties. They've got to keep forward momentum. Moss will take the carry, and he is wrapped up after a gain of maybe three yards. Hey, got another good one tonight. Number 13, Auburn, and number three, Clemson, Death Valley. 
Jared Stidham, the new quarterback for Auburn, gives them a lot of hope that they could be the sneaky pick in the SEC. But Kelly Bryant may have answered the question for Clemson. How do you replace Deshaun Watson? People say, hey, perhaps a better runner than Watson offered up, and he had a very nice debut last week. That's a good matchup yeah. down there at Clemson. Two really good defensive fronts in that ball game. Sure are. Second and seven. Brown batted at the line of scrimmage. And that was Torrance Brown getting up to get a piece of it. Nice play by Torrance Brown by just knowing where the guy was. Watch as this play goes. He's right here. He's going to be coming on a stunt back to the inside. Now he knows he can't get to the quarterback, but he keeps his eyes on Max Brown and times his jump as that ball's released and gets a piece of it. Gonna get loud here with 106,000 and a third and seven for the pit offense. Pressure, a gap. They pick it up. Brown downfield, and the ball is intercepted by Troy Apke. Another pickoff for the Penn State defense. Troy Apke, young man. Both of his parents went to Pitt. They were both athletes at Pitt, and now he picks Pitt. Well, I'm not sure what was happening on this play with the wide receiver, Jester Wea, because he just stopped on the play. It was a corner route, and he stopped running, and Max Brown expected him to keep running, and Apke got the interception. Partner of the college football playoff, and we're on the lookout all the time for the Taco Bell student sections for passionate fans like these. And they got reasons to be passionate and happy. Penn State has won eight straight home games. Time to feed Barkley again. Good work on the inside that time. That was Cam Carter with the tackle for loss. Well, this is a normal route combination. You get a hitch here, and you got a corner route. Now, Wea is going to get held a little bit by Christian Campbell and he's going to just kind of stop on the route. Max Brown throws it to a spot he expects Wea to be at, but still would have been a tough completion. But you got to hope that your receiver is on the same page with you on a throw like that. Barkley motions out McSorley to run the ball. I asked Trace McSorley, after having such an outstanding season a year ago, what, how are you a better quarterback now? What did you work on? And he said two things. One, I feel like I have a better pocket presence. I'm not as likely to just take off and run. I'm going to feel myself in the pocket a little bit more. And secondly, I worked hard on with our strength coach, on my speed, on my strength, to become a more of a running factor in this offense. We've seen that in the first two weeks already. Third and eight, as Pitt shows some pressure. They run an inside stunt. Off the edge, coming in and crashing down was Hendricks. Pat Narduzzi told us he thought that Hendricks could be a difference maker, a playmaker for this defense. He goes right around Ryan Bates. Right here, working on the left tackle. Gets low, got his shoulder low, and turned the corner quickly. And McSorley had no idea he came in from there. Start off his career as an SEC edge rusher at Tennessee. Made his way to Pitt, now back from injury. And he has shown what he is capable of. Perfect Anderson place. outside the numbers again, and they pin him again. Directional punting paying off for Blake Gilligan. Garrett Taylor with the tackle. Of course, this grand rivalry, you go back to the early 80s, Todd and Dan Marino were back and forth, 1981. 34 points in the second half as Todd got the best of them then. 82 for signature year. 1910 would be Penn State's win over Pitt. Penn State would go on to win the national championship. And I know it's been a special weekend for you, Todd. 35th anniversary. So many of your teammates making the trip back. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun seeing my former teammates and reliving memories from this rivalry. Here's Quadre Olison. What a nice run from Olison. Remember, he left the game earlier as they wrapped up that left shoulder. 
you know, in the three years that I played in the Pitt Penn State game, as we take a look at this Olison run again, 80, 81, and 82, we were both teams ranked in the top five in two of the three years, one of us in a position to play for a national championship. And the NFL talent on both sides of the field in those three years, guys that got drafted in high rounds, was outstanding. It was as good of a rivalry at that time as any in college football. First down as Brown comes near side, and that was broken up by Christian Campbell. I mean, think Mark May and Bill Fralick and Kurt Warner in your backfield yeah. alone, one of the all-time greats. Well, the 1980 game that we lost here, the first one I played in at 14 to 9, I look across the line and Hugh Green and oh. Ricky Jackson are the two defensive ends for Pittsburgh. They had seven guys drafted in the first five rounds off of that defense. Make a strong argument that Hugh Green was the most dominant defensive player in college football. Second and ten. Here is Olison again after that 17-yard run moments ago. They will move the chains one more time, the Pitt Panthers. You know, you take away the negative plays, and, and Pitt has had pretty decent balance. They've been able to run the football. Again, this is a very experienced offensive line, particularly the left side of that offensive line. And Quadri Olison, who was James Conner's backup last year, when Conner was the feature back, is the main go-to guy this year. Averaging seven yards a carry in the ball game so far. Here's Henderson trying to get him in space. Nice job by Campbell to come up. You can tell Penn State's defense is zeroed in on number 10. He was a factor in this ball game a year ago. Had 58 rushing yards, had 47 yards and a touchdown. Catching it was a return man, had a huge kickoff return that set up a score. Brent Pry has his defense locked in on wherever number 10 is and not allowing him to have an impact on the football game so far. Over 2,000 all-purpose yards last year. Only other pit player to ever do that, Tony Dorsett. Second and 10. Brown to French. Holly. Well, just in case you get confused, there are two different quadris on the field today, Henderson and Olison for Pitt. It's a very unique name. I talked to Jackie Quadri, Henderson's mom, and it actually means courage. And oddly enough, these two boys were born just four days apart in two different states, but both came up with the same name and both playing side by side on the same field. But I asked each other, what do you guys call each other? Quadri Henderson said, I just call him bro. They've been a dynamic duo for Pitt. Third and six. Moss straight ahead. First down. Good work from Shantez Moss. We talked about the experience on this offensive line, and it's primarily on the left side. And that's where they ran. Alex Officer, the left guard, Brian O'Neill, their versatile left tackle, just caved the defense in. And a nice run by Moss on third down. For the first down. I think this drive, Joe, has to end in points for Pittsburgh. I just don't know how long the Pitt defense can contain this Penn State offense. They've got to close the gap on this possession before the first half ends. Brown to the outside and complete for another first down. Gives us a chance to check in with Cassidy. What do you got, Cassidy? Herbert's a good-looking young quarterback we saw him a year ago. He's got that physical frame, great ability. Here's the shovel again this time. It goes nowhere as Buckholtz was tracking Moss. Yeah, they've run that shovel pass three times now. That was the third time. The first two times got decent yardage. That time, Ryan Buckholtz just tracked it down the line and made a nice play for no gain. One thing we haven't seen out of Pittsburgh yet is a screen. Again, you've got an experienced offensive line and good backs when they have the ball in their hands. Might see a screen here on second and 10.
Well, he caught it while laying flat and then a little something extra. So that penalty flag will rein in as it looked like Cam Brown was trying to control his momentum. And yeah. then all of a sudden, Moss gets up and he makes contact. Well, and a really costly penalty because if, it, if this is a catch, they yeah, lose yardage. Play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number six. 15-yard penalty, first down. See, this was going to bring up third and more than 10 because even if it's a catch, it's a loss of yardage play. Cam Brown not trying to do anything to, to hurt the ball carrier, he thought the play was still live, but it's a very costly penalty because now you've given Pittsburgh a free first down inside the 25-yard line. Well, Brown's got to realize the guy is down on the ground and just getting up, but he didn't check himself there and hit the brakes. And to your point, some urgency on this drive, and now a first down for Pitt inside the 25. Olison. Running high and running well down to the 17-yard line. He has looked much fresher on this drive. Again, a very critical drive and plenty of time. Just getting ready to go under two minutes. Pittsburgh has two timeouts. And you really don't want three points here because this Penn State offense, they score touchdowns. And they'll get the ball, Penn State, to start the third quarter. I think a touchdown on this drive is essential for Pittsburgh. Second and three, as he gives to Hall, and Hall able to get past that first would-be tackler. And they will move the chains. I think they used a timeout right there. Pat Narduzzi running down the sideline, used one of his two remaining timeouts. Timeout, Pittsburgh, their second timeout of the half. Take a short break and come back to Beaver Stadium. About the offensive line on the left side. Brian O'Neill, the left tackle, is a very unique story. He is a very athletic guy. Came to Pitt as a tight end, was a wide receiver and tight end in high school in Wilmington, Delaware. And Matt Canada last year used him a lot of different ways. Not your typical left tackle. The only reason I bring that up, Joe, is because in this possession, in this part of the field, and Pitt desperately needing a touchdown, don't be surprised if they don't have some kind of a trick play involving O'Neal to try to get the ball in the end zone. 6'6", 305, and with that skill, here's the 12th play of the drive. First and goal. Olison, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage that time by Apke, who had the interception earlier. Yeah, really nice job by Apke. Went low, got into the legs of the bigger back, and got him on the ground. Remember, Pitt just used one of their two timeouts. Looks like maybe Penn State has called a timeout. Penn State. Penn State. I don't know. All right. Reminder tonight on ABC in Columbus, it is an early season showdown. Number five, Oklahoma. Number two, Ohio State. And coverage kicks off on ABC at 7.30. Oklahoma's got that 11-game win streak. Quarterback matchup, JT Barrett with the new offensive coordinator and Kevin Wilson and Baker Mayfield, who saw his offensive coordinator rise up unexpectedly to become the head coach this summer in Lincoln Riley. I love these matchups that we get in the early season yeah. that this era of the college football playoff has produced. You got to get that big notch on the belt. And that'll happen tonight for either the Sooners or the Buckeyes. Second and goal now. Brown checks down to Olison. Spin move and once again struggles to get to the line of scrimmage. Christian Campbell. Good defense. Good tackles in the open field by the defensive secondary at Penn State. Forcing little to no gains. Todd, 45 plays now for the Pitt offense. You made the point. This drive 
has to produce yeah. something on the scoreboard. Yeah, and it can't be a field goal. I, I really believe that because, again, Penn State's offense is so explosive. They don't like to settle for field goals. And, and so you've got to get a touchdown. If you can go in 14-7 to at halftime, knowing that your defense kind of settled in and overcame the turnovers, that, that's a good first half of football if you're Pittsburgh. But it's essential. I mean, all that... Ball possession and time of possession and more plays doesn't mean anything if you don't finish with points. They got to get something here and play keep away with that time of possession or Saquon Barkley right. and McSorley and all right. the talent. And all that is exactly side. what you want to do, but you just in a, in a situation like this, you got to get points and you really want seven and not three. So here is that situation, the opportunity, the must-have, says Todd. Third and goal. And the cascade of sound of 106,000. Brown to the end zone. And incomplete. Arojo Lopes covered by Grant Haley. Lopes had a step. That ball's just a little bit overthrown by Max Brown. And you got to settle for the field goal. Good defensive possession. After the penalty, the critical penalty on Cam Brown, they were able to overcome that and get three nice stops there in deep in your own territory. You see that 0 for 2 under the line of Alex Kessman. Very strong leg, but the redshirt freshman had a struggle in his first game last week. This is a 28-yard attempt. And that's got to feel good for the young man. And Pitt finally on the board. 14 to 3 our mark right now. Yeah, you had to get points. Pat Narduzzi encouraging his troops. You wanted seven, you'll take three because you have to have points. Again, your your game plan offensively has worked. You've run the ball, you've possessed the ball, you've eaten up clock, you've limited their opportunities offensively, but you're still down 11. Mike Kosicki, the All-America tight end has performed at that level today, Todd. Well, again, this Penn State offense likes to put defenders in a bind and make them choose. And with a guy as talented as Gasicki, you know, he's not your most physical point of attack blocking tight end, but he runs like a wide receiver. And because of that, he creates real problems for a defense. Saquon Barkley, everybody knows about him. But you just can't get, you can't forget all the weapons that they have. And Gasicki and Trace McSorley on the same page on both of those touchdowns. Two first quarter touchdowns for Gasicki. So today and last week, it marks the first time since 2008 that Penn State has scored 14 or more points in the first quarters of two consecutive games. Pitt, Pitt settled in a bit. Defense did their job long drives by the offense. That was 15 plays in 77 yards to finish with a field goal. Saquon Barkley is in on kick return, and he will take a knee. Been some great offenses through the years. Of course, Todd, your national title team with yourself at quarterback, Kurt Warner, McCloskey at tight end. And then the 94 team, I know you got great respect for Collins and the guys. Yeah, well, absolutely. It was, that was an outstanding offense. All three of those guys were first-round draft picks. But you look at what they've got this year at those three positions, and you throw in the wide receivers that all three of those offenses have had. There's Kajana Carter, former first-round draft pick of the Cincinnati Bengals. Comes to a lot of Penn State games. Very involved with the program here. Loves to come back. Lives in Florida, but comes back to Penn State quite often. He was actually originally right down from right down the street from Ohio State. Grew up in Westerville, Ohio. And here's the modern day great. Saquon Barkley, 11 yards on that carry just over a minute to go before the half. Penn State with one timeout remaining. One timeout, just approaching a minute. A lot of time for Trace McSorley in this Penn State offense. First down, McSorley. He's going to tuck and run and a good cut as he picks up about eight and a half yards. Want to remind you that coming up in moments, it'll be the State Farm halftime report. Kevin Agandi, Mac Brown, 
and my man Booger McFarlane. They're going to get us set with everything that's been going on in college football today. Take a look at that Iowa Iowa State thriller. Second and two under half a minute to go before the half and this is complete that time to Jawan Johnson. That'll stop the clock, move the chains. Penn State's going to take a shot deep down the field here. Maybe this play right here. You've got Gesicki who can run. You've got Deshaun Hamilton in the slot. Here's McSorley. So that'll leave 11 seconds remaining before halftime. Well, right now you're thinking about, depending on your field goal range, maybe one more completion, two more at the most, two quick ones at the most, to try to give yourself a chance. Last week, Tyler Davis kicked a career-long 47-yard field goal in the opener against Akron. That was bad weather, rain, beautiful day today. Might even be able to extend that out a little bit. Here is Davis. Let's see if they give him a chance here. They only rush three. And he threw it to the outside of Hamilton. And six seconds remain. Tell you what, all in all, for Pittsburgh, if they can hold here, Pretty doggone good first half defensively. They overcame a couple turnovers by their offense in short fields, and they've held this offense to 14 points so far. McSorley gonna step up and launch it downfield. by Dane Jackson. That thing was floating for a moment with a whole lot of chance to cash in on. That's why I kept saying so far, because you just never know. Penn State did what you have to do. Throw that thing up and see if you can get a tip ball. And Pitt comes away with the interception. 14-3, number four team in the country. The State Farm Halftime Report is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Narduzzi, this Penn State team scored 52 points last week, a high-powered offense. What's the most effective thing you've done to limit them so far today? Well, I think the first, you know, starts with, you know, stopping Barkley. You know, they've had really one big run. It was a quarterback run, you know, uh, up the middle, which we hadn't seen before. It's a new, new run for them, so we've got that adjusted. They'll come back to it in the second half, I'm sure. I also thought keeping their offense off the field was brilliant. You've had so many extended drives, but what do you have to change now to actually put more points on the board off those extended drives? We can't turn the ball over. I mean, we turn the ball over and give them a quick six to start the game. You can't do that in a nasty atmosphere like we've got here at State College. What do you say to Max Brown at the half now? You know what? I think he did some good things out there today. I mean, he's throwing the ball. we got to make some you know, contested catches, I think, at times, and I'm happy with where he is. You know, one one route, you know, they, they're, they're holding us over here, and, you know, we'll get into that. Okay, I feel I, the one pick, you know, we'll put on him, but we got to get out of a break early. And the other one, um, we got to get off a off a hole. Thanks, God. Thank you. Marines return. Hit in number four, Penn State. Brown taking a shot downfield, and it is intercepted. Quick pass, quick score. Mike Gasicki from Trace McSorley. Trace McSorley hits a seam, and look at him go. And here he is on another RPO, picking up the block and into the end zone. College football on ABC, presented by Walmart. Number four team in the country, a 14 to three. Penn State taking on Pitt. One of the great rivalries renewed a year ago as Penn State will start off on offense to get things going in the second half. In that first half, Trace McSorley, you see him trotting out now. He missed on six of his last seven passes. Pitt ran 46 plays to Penn State's 24. In fact, Pitt had two 15-plus play drives, but only three points on the board. Joe Tessitore and Todd Blackledge, glad to be with you. Holly Rowe down on the sidelines.
McSorley only had 44 yards passing in that first half. Barkley with 22 yards rushing. Todd, I think if you said that Josh Cochran, defensive coordinator for Pitt, you're holding them to those numbers, you got to yeah. feel pretty good. Down you, 11. You feel great. I mean, first of all, you limited their shots, their opportunities, and then you got a couple big stops. Here's Saquon to the outside where he's so capable. You know, one of the things, when you have a back with the ability of Saquon Barkley, your wide receivers are inspired to block on the perimeter. Watch this block by DeAndre Tompkins. Not a very big guy, but that block got about 12 more yards for Barkley. These wide receivers are conditioned with Barkley knowing if we do our job, he could take it to the house anytime. Here he is again. And a first down for Penn State, just like that. Two carries and already past midfield. Saquon Barkley. Well, uh, you just can't leave big voided areas. This is too much green grass for Barkley. Too big of a hole. You have to get bodies in every gap. And it can't be a body turned sideways. It has to be a body with his numbers facing the line of scrimmage and constrict the space as much as possible for a back like Barkley. Barkley steps out. Miles Sanders comes in. Well hyped. Number one overall in recruit in Pennsylvania a couple years ago. McSorley over the middle and beyond Gasicki's reach. Well, they had him. Had Gasicki singled up on a smaller safety, Dennis Briggs, who's only 5'10". And McSorley's just a little bit off with the throw. Again, this coverage scheme, a lot of man-to-man. -man. You leave your corners on an island in this defense. Safeties are covering guys coming down their area of the field and a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. And so far, Pitt's been able to hold up with that coverage. Second and 10 as Sanders remains the back. Looked like he was going to go jump past for a moment there, and then McSorley decided to tuck it. Now there is the McSorley family. Dad Rick played at Richmond. His mother, Andrea, has the sunglasses on there. I'll tell you, she's very, very smart in the fact that she brings food to the offensive linemen <laughs> at the hotel every Friday. She wants her baby to be protected. She says, I'm going to take care of the big boys. You take care of my guy. Yeah. Third and six now. It's Rick and Andrea's son looks over. And Barkley flanks him back in the game. That never had a shot. Great penetration by Salim Brightwell. See, this is what I think you have to do with, with Barkley. You've got to hit him in the backfield as often as you can. Great penetration, got inside the block of Brendan Mann, number 70, who was trying to pull out and get him. And the more times you can stop him before he gets a head of steam going, the better off. That was an excellent play on third down by Brightwell. Young man from Paramus Catholic in North Jersey was a high school teammate of Michigan's Rashawn Gary. That was a heck of a team they had. Henderson, fair catch inside the five. Wow. Put your heels on the 10, young man. Give yourself a chance. Hit on offense when we come back. Look at our progressive pylon cam. Our beautiful day here with Pitt and number four, Penn State. Mike Gasicki, one of his two touchdowns on the day had an excellent first quarter it settled into this game you know who's didn't settle down rock the panther i mean rock the panther what are you doing our progressive pylon cam my man give it a break no need to step on it did rock change jerseys at halftime too he went to the home retro blue as his team dawns those retro vintage early 80s road whites that you played against todd blackledge we talked about it in the break, just kind of a, a, a mental error that time on the decision to field that punt by Quadri Henderson. Yeah, there's a chance Penn State might have been able to down it even deeper, but 
when you catch that ball inside the five yard line on the road, you really put your offense in a bind. And now, now it's second and 10, and you got the big student section behind the offense, and that's where the most noise in this stadium is. See if Max Brown can dig him out of that hole. Here's a good run by Olison. So it'll be third and short as Grant Haley had to make the tackle. Holly? One injury note for the Pitt Panthers. Their right guard, Brandon Hodges, that graduate transfer from Texas, limped to the locker room right before the half, and it does not look like he's returned to the field to play. Alex Books or Richard Jr., number 78, is in right now, guys, for the Panthers in this critical goal line situation with their backs to the goal line. Bookser was suspended for last week's game and a DUI arrest this summer. But they consider him one of their three best overall linemen. But he may be shaking some of the rust off. Third and two. They normally go left behind their experience. Play action on third and two. Brown looking over the options, and it's incomplete. Really well covered by Penn State. He did have his deeper receiver, Chris Clark, number 87, with a little bit of space. He wanted to throw it quickly. He was looking to throw it right now to Flanagan, number 88. And Flanagan was well covered by Grant Haley. And Max Brown ends up throwing the ball away. But the switch in field position is going to be critical on this punt exchange. Ryan Winslow's going to have to sky this thing. And Tompkins is already setting up shot at about the 43. Third year as the starting punter is Winslow. And he backs him all the way up to the 40 where Tompkins reverses field, catches a seam, and a good return past midfield off of a decent 4.4 hang time punt from Winslow, but a nice job from Tompkins. James Franklin told us since he's been there, they have not had a return man that really has put any fear in their opponents. They think they have that in Tompkins. Had a 61-yard punt return for a touchdown last week. That was the first time since 2008. Derrick Williams returned a punt for a touchdown against Wisconsin. And they really believe Tompkins gives them that kind of a threat now in their return game. And Penn State starts on the plus side. Remember, they had a short field to open up the game. And for how long can Josh Conklin, the defensive coordinator of Pitt, Hold these stars in check. Nick Sorley with time over the middle. Saquon Barkley, touchdown, Nittany Lions. I guess not long was the answer. See, they missed him on this similar kind of play a few possessions ago. This time, Barkley didn't miss him. He's going to slip right out and run right by Brightwell, the linebacker. There's no safety help in this coverage. He's the number three receiver to the field. That means it's a tough matchup for a linebacker on a guy like Barkley. And a big play, an explosive play for the touchdown. Forty six yard touchdown catch Saquon Barkley your corner takes the outside receiver your safety takes the number two receiver That means a linebacker has to cover your number three and when your number three has the skill of number 26 You got problems home run for Trace McSorley College Football on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Todd, I was so happy for you, partner, to see the reception that you and your 1982 teammates received on the 35th anniversary of celebrating your national title team and I know you treasured that moment it was great you know we had over 50 guys down there on the field there were several other guys that were in town last night for a get-together that couldn't stay for the game you know, one of them was our tight end Mike McCluskey whose son's playing for Villanova and he was off to a game and but it was really great to, to see so many of those guys and in classic Todd Blackwich form folks because he is a modest guy and a humble guy and very appreciative and grateful 
the thing you've talked about most the past couple days is actually the 1980 game yeah. against Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> that interception you threw in the loss when Pitt beat you 14 to nine. You can't escape some of those no, moments. You know, life. there was a memory that I'll never forget and it helped me as a young quarterback. We had just converted a fourth and eight and I was trying to throw the ball away. And in the last minute, I hesitated, tried to get one more completion in instead of killing the clock. Carlton Williamson, who was a great player, went on to play for the 49ers, intercepted it. I got buried under a pile of pit players. That pit defense was phenomenal, but I learned. If I'm going to throw it away, i got to throw that thing up in the stands. You know, when I played, you weren't allowed to just spike the ball and throw it into the ground. You had to actually throw it out of bounds, and I never made that mistake again. You know, you make me laugh because... I want to show people the end of that play because, I mean, they needed to send a search and a rescue team yeah. to find you after that pickoff. Here's also, let's go back. I want to show folks the end of that interception when Todd had to make the tackle in the game at 80. Somewhere at the end of this ends up being my partner. Yeah. But the pit crowd just gets all in there to play. I mean, Todd, you were down with the search well, and rescue for Todd It was Todd like Blackledge. 35 seconds left in the game at that point. The game was over. That was the play of the game. And, uh, yeah, and then not only did I have to get up, at some point, but then I had to run across the field back to our sideline, which wasn't wasn't much fun either. But you learn lessons, and uh, you know I remember that as vividly as the throw to Garrity in the championship game in the Sugar Bowl. Here's Brown now to the near nice side and able to get throw. that complete to Jester Wea. Out route, single coverage, good timing, good route, throw it to the outside. This is good throw and catch against man coverage. So a first down for Pitt. As Barkley had the touchdown catch moments ago for Penn State. He's looking to answer here. And you see why when we talked about in the first half how important it is to try to get a touchdown instead of field goals because of how explosive this Penn State offense is. Three points just don't do you much good. The jet motion really opened up things for Olsen, and he takes advantage inside the 30. Good, hard run by Quadri Olsen. Yeah, that jet motion, sometimes it's just eye candy. Sometimes they hand him the ball, but you just want to create distraction. Watch as this play opens up. Now, the right tackle, number 55, is going to do a great job getting to the second level. Picks off the linebacker, Kabinda, and then good hard running by Olison. Olison, who left the game earlier today, had to get that left shoulder area taped up. He's got 91 yards rushing now, 32 of them coming there. Had 91 a week ago against Youngstown State. Sure to go over that in this ball game. And they will go with French this time, who wiggles his way for eight. Holly? A huge development for this Penn State defense, guys. Their best defensive player, Marcus Allen, number two, is on the bench with an injury. He's got ice packs on his neck. They've been fitting his left knee for a new sleeve. It does not look like his return is imminent. In his place, number four, Nick Scott. The defensive coaches say he sets the tone for our defense. He is the heart and soul of this group. See how they play without him. Allen had 110 tackles last year. That's the most for a Penn State safety in 15 years. Second and two. Moss. Down to the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Pitt. Well, once again, we're in that same position where Pitt needs to cash in with a touchdown. They've got a nice drive going. They're running the football. They've got 127 yards rushing now against this Penn State defense, but they've got to get touchdowns because of the fact of the big playability that this Penn State offense has. First and goal. Here's Moss. And he was met at the four-yard line by Apke. Apke had a little help. Kabinda hit him also. They both met him in the hole. Big-time play there on your goal line defense. Watch 40 and 28 combined. And Moss goes backwards. Olison checks into the game here on second and goal. This is a good down for play action, second and goal. Third down, they're expecting pass. Interesting to see play clocks down in the backfield. Yeah. The play clock running yeah, they down. Call timeout. They were slow getting out of the huddle. Again, remember, timeout. this is Max Brown's second game as a pit quarterback. 
Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, his second game as the pit offensive coordinator, and they were forced to call a timeout there, and it, it's probably smart. You hate to waste a timeout, but you certainly don't want to waste this scoring opportunity inside the five-yard line. Let's look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. Of course, Penn State sitting there at number four. We're going to have a showdown later tonight right here on ABC between Ohio State and Oklahoma. You got a read on that, Todd? I, I don't really. I mean, I, I really like Baker Mayfield, you know, and, and because I, he reminds me so much. He and Trace McSorley That's are right. so <laughs> similar just in their stature. They both play with a chip on their shoulder. He didn't play very well at home against Ohio State last year. I think he will be highly motivated. I think Ohio State has the better overall team. You know, so I think it's going to be a heck of a matchup. And if Mayfield has the kind of game he's capable of, it could be a real doozy. I love that offensive line against that Ohio yep. State defensive yep. line. Second and goal for Pitt after the timeout. Olison now lines up as the lone back here. Too tight shift to the near side. Motion is Henderson. They're going to give it to Henderson, and he's going to be tackled for a loss as Miller and Haley were on him. Well, I'll tell you what, Penn State guessed right because had they given this ball to Olison, it would have been a touchdown. Watch the hole open up here. Instead, they give it to Henderson on the sweep. Penn State has good outside pursuit and leverage and stops that play for a loss of yardage. Olison had more room inside than Henderson had outside. And now it's almost definitely passing situation on third down. Brown to the end zone. Incomplete. These missed opportunities for Pitt as they haven't converted now on six of their last seven third downs. Manny Bowen came unblocked on a blitz, and that's why Max Brown had to just get rid of the football. He didn't have time to, to set his feet or let somebody open. Manny Bowen right up the middle forced the early throw, and Penn State stops it again. Kessman. After 0 for 2 last week for the redshirt freshman kicker, now 2 for 2. The young man who trained as an amateur boxer through high school showing his punch today. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year and one of this year's top Heisman candidates, Saquon Barkley, has our lone touchdown here of this second half. Of course, he joins the long list of notable running backs to come through this stadium here, Tom. Outstanding backs. I, I had the, the good pleasure of playing with Kurt Warner on that list. He was the best player that I ever played with at, e, at any level in the NFL or in college. And Saquon does a lot of the same kind of things with his ability to make jump cuts and and not lose speed as he changes directions laterally. Kurt was great at that as well. Barkley is back on kick return. As this will go for a touchback. That leads us to our Aflac trivia question. As we ask, Aflac! saw that big list. Who's Penn State's all-time leading rusher? I mean, you got some. Hall of Famers to choose from, some pro football Hall of Famers to choose from. And Franco Harris was here this weekend. Yeah, he was here. Let's get a chance to visit him. I did not. We missed each other at an event, and, uh, but Franco is up here quite a bit. Very nice man. I did spend a little time with him in Canton during the Hall of Fame festivities in August. Beautiful new facilities there in your hometown. Miles Sanders will start this series at running back flanking McSorley and he gets the delayed handoff and he fumbles the ball ball is out and it looks to recover from Sanders boy and that's exactly what the pit defense needs at this point their offense hasn't been able to punch it in if they could have given him a short field dangerous play for the young running back just didn't secure it good hit by a doughy Coming in from the outside, and uh, Penn State very fortunate there. Little Barkley comes in on second and 13. 
McSorley. A lot of time to think about it. Good coverage. Let's check in with Cassidy in the studio. Should be fun to see. Interested to see what the freshman J.K. Dobbins looks like. Sensational running back for Ohio State. He was excellent in week one against Indiana. Went for 181 yards that night. Third and 13. Nick Sorley going to tuck. Try to get back. But Elijah Zeiss was waiting on him. Couldn't get that cut back. That's a really good play by Elijah Zeiss because that's an open field one-on-one -on -one tackle. McSorley is a pretty shifty runner when he gets out of the pocket. And this forces the punt. That's an outstanding play by Zeiss. And maybe an opportunity here for Pitt. James Franklin says, listen, we'll take directional stuff away from Henderson all day long. They don't want to see the ball in his hands. Dangerous number 10. They were missing a guy in their punt protection there. Had to run on late. Here's Gilligan to punt. Anderson back at the 20. And look at him go right up the sideline past midfield. And that is exactly what Pitt wanted to see. See, I think the fact that Penn State had a guy run on the field late, it disrupted the timing a little bit. The punt was low. It was a little off the numbers. And Henderson, for the first time today, makes the first guy miss and turns it into a pretty good play. Did he step out of bounds? That's the question. They're going to take a look at it. It's still a decent return regardless. But if his heel was down, they'll bring this one back. The punt return is under review. His toe is in bounds. Is his heel make contact with the sideline or not? Our rules expert, Bill Lamagne, can chime in here on what right now will stands as a 34-yard return. Billy, what do you see? Well, the replay officials will look at whether he stepped out of bounds or not. The key thing will be is the heel down. It appears from the view we had that the foot is down, so replay would move the ball back to that where the spot of the ball is when he stepped out of bounds. Looks to be about the 35-yard line, in between the 34 and 35-yard line. Again, still pretty good field position for the Panthers, but not as good as it would have been out past midfield. Ball is currently spotted on the 46 of Penn State. Bill, you feel like you got the proper video evidence you want right there? there? That's yeah, a good yeah, shot right there, there isn't it? Down there. Yeah, that's the shot. One of the things, too, is the ACC officials for the first time are getting a chance to use the sideline monitors that the Big Ten has at every stadium. Now, so, the re he won't make a decision, but he can talk and do advisory work with the replay officials. Now, let's clarify here, Bill, because we got ACC on the field, but we got Big Ten upstairs on replay, correct? That is correct, sir. Tom Herbert is our replay official. I worked with Tom 11 years uh, as my back judge, outstanding back judge and super replay official. So once again, this is the situation with Quadre Henderson as he was tiptoeing the sidelines for what was a 34-yard return. Of course, Henderson last year just dynamic, led the nation combined kick return yardage. At four, has four total career return touchdowns. A consensus All-American as a return specialist. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Three foot, four minutes, 25 seconds on the clock. Four, two, five on the clock. Well, Quadri Henderson started playing football when he was five years old, and despite being just 5'8", he has a lot of courage. His name means courage. His mom, Jackie, told me, don't measure his size, measure his heart. And how about this video? Little itty-bitty, the helmet's bigger than he has. He's been showing courage for about 15 years now. A lot of courage on that. He just stepped out of bounds. I could watch that video all day long. That is great stuff. That was Quadri Henderson back in the day. Grew to be five, all of five foot eight. First down throw, a comeback near side. Weah. Nope, didn't have his foot in. 
Max Brown threw this one a little bit too wide for Wea. They've connected a couple times on this out route. That time, the timing was a little bit late, and you can see Wea not able to get that one foot inbound. Made a secure catch, but foot on the line. Good call by the officiating crew. Olison, as he tries to gain a little extra yards, Cabinda with the tackle. You know, for Pittsburgh, it just seems like they've been able to pound out yards. They've been able to run the football with some effectiveness. 221 total yards. They've actually outgained Penn State, run significantly more plays, but they haven't had any big plays, Joe. You know, they haven't had any big explosive plays out of their offense, and that's the difference in the game. Penn State has had a couple explosive plays, and Pittsburgh has not. You see number two for Penn State, safety Marcus Allen back in. Stepped away injured a moment ago. Third and six. Movement. They'll go back five more. Right tackle. Full start offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, third down. Jared Jones-Smith, the right tackle, moved early. Todd, let's look at the Pack Life game summary. Well, you take a look at it. Trace McSorley, three touchdown passes. Penn State, only 33 offensive plays compared to 59 for Pittsburgh. But the big three, McSorley, Gasicki, and Barkley, all contributing in a big way. That's our Pacific Life game summary. And now a third and 11 for the Panthers. Pressure off the edge. Brown goes down. Sharif Miller. Buckholtz and the guys getting to Max Brown. Well, that's a tough possession for Jared Jones-Smith, the right tackle. He moves early the play before, and now right now he just gets whipped on a one-on-one -on -one pass rush by Sharif Miller. It's just nothing but a speed rush. Gets to the outside. Buckholtz helps from the other side. But Sharif Miller showing some speed coming off the edge, the sophomore out of Philadelphia. Third sack of the day for Penn State. As Winslow turns this one over and Tompkins driven all the way back to the 20 yard line and wrapped up there. Good field flip for Pitt. Let's get that answer to the Affleck trivia question. Shows you the great list of running backs for Penn State. And we asked who's the all time leading rusher. What do you got, Blackledge? Well, I saw this in the notes. That's the only reason I knew it. <laughs> it was Evan Royster. 3,932 yards played in the late 2000s. Kurt Warner, my former teammate and roommate, was number two on that all-time list. That's like a phone book full oh of notable gosh. running backs, and no yet doubt. Evan Royster wasn't yeah. on that list. He's the all-time leading rusher. Yeah. That's how deep the talent has been through the years at that position here at Penn State. That's like an all-world Aflac question. Saquon Barkley, here he goes again and again when he gets to the outside. Watch out. Yeah, you cannot have a soft edge on your defense. First of all, a bad job by the defensive end, Dwayne Hendricks. Number eight, got to set a hard edge. And then watch the receiver, Jawan Jones, blocking on the perimeter. And then a horse collar tackle at the end of the play. And just like that, in one play after the punt, Penn State is in business again. 19 yards, plus the penalty, and they're walking it down to the 41. Josh Conklin, the defensive coordinator, talked about trying to keep Barkley in a cage as much as they could. Set an edge with your defense, and that time, Dwayne Hendricks did not do his job, and Barkley made him pay for it. Barkley now on the other side as he dismisses defenders. He's just so dangerous, Joe. I mean, you know, we've seen him come out of the backfield and catch the ball. When he runs it, you just kind of hold your breath. And we've seen the wide receivers, how they block tenaciously downfield because if he gets to the next level, he can either run around you, he can run through arm tackles, or he has the speed to just flat out outrun you. When he outran Adoree Jackson in the Rose Bowl last year for a touchdown, that said something to me. 
Here's McSorley now as he keeps. And gets to the 28. Zeiss with the tackle. Yeah, Dory Jackson is a straight line speed to the max. Impressive feet. Barkley taking a break for a moment. It's Andre Robinson is in the game for Penn State. Second and eight. McSorley and waiting on it was Polk right at the 10 yard line wow what a beautiful throw now this is a linebacker Idowu who is in coverage on a wide receiver he's actually in position but he has no idea where the ball is and the ball is perfectly thrown to Polk out over the outside shoulder former high school teammates at Briarwood down in Virginia and they connect there to make it a first and goal for the Nittany Lions. Big number 26 is back in. I loved what Trace McSorley told us yesterday about Saquon Barkley and his impact on this team. Here's Barkley as he was met that time by Briggs. I loved how he talked about what he brings to the team as a leader and the fact that he just refuses to allow anybody to give less than 100%. He has a tremendous work ethic, and he holds everybody on this team accountable to the same kind of effort and attitude. Penn State up 21-6. to six. College football presented by Walmart will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. End of three. coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. Now from the second largest college football stadium in the country, you are watching the Big Ten on ABC. Beaver Stadium, 106,000 to see hit and Penn State. As this fourth quarter will open up with the Nittany Lions looking for more up 21 to 6 on their in-state rivals. Second and goal. Barkley lowers the shoulder and lowers the boom right into the end zone. Saquon Barkley, 28 career rushing touchdowns now. So somebody might be saying, I'll say, so what does a 550-pound squat or a 405-pound power clean have to do with football? This is it right here. Power, the ability to run through tacklers and take that ball into the end zone. He's fast, he's elusive, he has great vision, and he has tremendous power. Saquon Barkley. Big time, big drive. Uh, he's going to run this way, right behind the left side, but it's just Barkley. He sees a nice opening, gets a good block by the center, McGovern, and then you just can't let him get his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. He's too powerful. Legs are moving, and ball's crossing the end zone, and Penn State with a big lead now. Second half, he has hit his stride, hasn't he, Todd? Again, I just go back to the, the impact that he has on the team. Obviously, a super talent, one of the best football players in the country, if not the best. Might be the first running back pick whenever he decides to go into the NFL draft. But his leadership and his work ethic and what he demands of himself and what he demands of everybody on his team, we saw it in practice on Thursday. He just holds guys accountable. And he doesn't ask guys to do anything less than what he does himself. Wants he has rushed for a drill. touchdown now, Todd, in nine straight games. Yeah. Eight was the active streak that he was tied for. I don't know when that thing's going to end. 
He is hard to bring down. Our annual week one Monday Night Football doubleheader comes to you September 11th. Drew Brees and the Saints, Sam Bradford and the Vikings get you started at 6.55 Eastern. Then it is Chargers, Broncos at 10.15. Isn't that Adrian Peterson now playing That's against right. the Vikings? Yep. Playing in Minnesota for the first time as part of the road team after that great run. Dalvin Cook, his replacement in Minnesota. Seems like just yesterday we were calling games with Mr. Cook. Yeah. He was a heck of a college football player. Probably be an excellent pro, too. And now this pit offense back out there against this Penn State defense that continues to do their job. Good run that time by Moss. Six quarters into the season, Penn State has allowed only these six points, these two field goals to pit. Well, they've sacked Max Brown three times a day. Yeah, they've given up 133 yards rushing, but no big plays. I mean, there's been a couple runs that have been for first downs, but nothing that has really threatened or stretched this Penn State defense. They have been very solid and very on point. Much different defense than the one that played Pitt a year ago. Moss motions back into the backfield. And they give it to him on the pitch, and he is taken down by Oruwarie. Monty's a big corner, six foot one, 209 pounds. Just looking at him on the practice field Thursday. He looked like he was about 6'3 compared to the other corners out there he was working with, but he is a big, rangy guy. You know, we spend so much time talking about the skill position players on offense, but this defense is showing that they will just run to the ball. They'll get after it. Showing an edge blitz with the safety there, and Olison on the shovel, and that was well-timed. Quadre Olison. Yeah, that was really good timing and good execution. Max Brown, watch how long he keeps his ball in the belly on the fake. That fooled the Penn State defense, and Olison able to get it and go straight up the field for a nice game. Well, he put Farmer into conflict there, and 35 yards later, that's a, Pitt has himself the biggest a first play, down. The biggest play they've had. Darren Hall now. As this has been a steady diet of that same look. Nice job by the pit offensive line getting up to the second level on that. You're going to kind of option the end. Torrance Brown was the guy that you're, you're kind of running it just like the option. Instead of pitching it back on the option, you're pitching it forward. If it falls to the ground, the good thing it's not a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. So it's a pretty safe play. And if your line gets to the second level, it can be effective. Ball picked up and sent back by Nick Scott. You like form tackling, do you, Blackledge? <laughs> yep. Head up, wrap them up, send them back. Right out of the textbook. Second and six. Matt Flanagan as he rolls ahead. And they will be moving the sticks for a first and goal. Well, Sean Watson, offensive coordinators, found something a little bit with the shovel pass on this possession. They've hit a couple different guys with it. That time the tight end. But it's effective. Good looking drive, well managed by the OC Watson and the grad transfer quarterback, Max Brown. First and goal. Olison gets close to the five that time. Mm -hmm. 
again. Pittsburgh this year replacing James Conner. Finished his career with 3,733 yards, 56 touchdowns, second only to Tony Dorsett. He's having a nice ball game today. Had a little shoulder injury earlier in the ball game. Has come back, running the football strong. Moss motions back in on second and goal. This time Brown, instead of that shovel to Olison, decides to keep it himself. And Farmer comes up with a tackle, and Brown is sent back. And he lost his helmet here, Todd. Yeah. Yeah, they're telling him right now he's got to come out for a play, which means Ben DiNucci, their backup quarterback, is going to have to run this third down play. That's the rule. Lose your helmet, got to come out. Now, the good news for Pitt is DiNucci is a dual threat guy. He is a very able runner, and so I wouldn't be surprised if this is a run pass option for the backup quarterback, DiNucci. 6'2", 220 pound sophomore who has experience, came into the pinstripe bowl against Northwestern. Nearly led them to a win in that bowl game in Yankee Stadium. He made the quarterback competition really strong for Max Brown this summer, made his presence felt. Here he goes, Danucci with the cut and with the score, one and done, into the end zone. How about it, Ben Danucci? Come in and get the job done like that. Really did a nice job of selling the fake, which fooled Koa Farmer, number seven. And then did a nice job of making the shift to the outside. Watch Farmer bite on the ball fake. Danucci pulls it out, has to make one more guy miss, which he does. That's Tariq Castro Fields, number five. And Ben Danucci comes in for one play and makes it a touchdown. And they're going, going to keep him two. on the field here, Todd, to try to make this a 14-point margin if they can get the two-point conversion. Well, again, and what he brings is that dual threat. A touchdown. The previous play is under review. Now here's the ball just has to cross the plane with him being in control of it. Well, let's look at our progressive pylon cam here. You be the judge. Can't get a better look than that. Pretty clear yeah, with the progressive the pylon cam that that is. Doesn't have a to be score. all the way in the end zone, just has to break the, the plane, the nose of the football. It does. That's a touchdown. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And that's the first touchdown allowed by Penn State's defense this season. Holly. Well, obviously, Benucci was fighting for Max Brown's starting spot. When he was named the backup, he had such a great attitude. He said, then I'm just going to be the best darn backup I can be. <laughs> and in a big situation here, called upon late. Max Brown getting attended to on the sideline, bleeding from the side of his head. So he may be out for just a few minutes. Henry lost his helmet. You can see them trying to close up that wound. But Ben DiNucci comes in one play, gets the touchdown now out there for the two-point conversion attempt. You put the ball in the left hash, so you expect something running to the right. Could be a rub or a pick play with the wide side of the field to the right. Danucci, shovel pass, Olison. Yeah, and they're giving it to him. Breaks the plane as he was met by Marcus Allen. So Ben Danucci, the local Pitt area product who led Pine Richland High to a state title, comes in, scores a touchdown, gets the two-point conversion, microwaves this offense. Quick fix, Ben DiNucci. Watch Alex Officer leads that play. Ben DiNucci comes in, gets the chop done on two plays. That's pretty productive two plays. And how about the shovel pass on that scoring drive for Pitt? Brought to us by the U.S. Marines. You take a look at the yards per play. Again, that's the big play capability of Penn State and the difference. Plus the two to one turnover ratio in Penn State's favor. Barkley's going to have a chance for a return here. 
And they're able to corral Saquon at the 23. He's had himself a good second half. Time. Yeah, the first half, Pittsburgh did a nice job of containing him and limiting his opportunities. Only five carries for 22 yards, but he's up to 88 yards rushing. He has zero receptions in the first half. Two receptions for 46 yards and a touchdown, so a much bigger impact on this Penn State offense here in the second half. Makes pretty good sense to give the football to 26. There are the big three, McSorley, Barkley, and Gasicki. Now listen, we haven't seen a lot of the Penn State offense, even though they've been productive when they've been out there. Pitts had 69 offensive plays to Penn State's 39 offensive plays, but a two-touchdown lead for the number four team in the country. Remember last year in the game in Pittsburgh, Pitt jumped out to an early lead, led 28 to seven. That was early in the first quarter. Penn State chipped away and came all the way back. Here's Barkley out of the backfield, taken down by Zeiss Holly. Well, you guys talked about his prowess in the weight room. Saquon Barkley is a monster. He lifts so much weight. But I thought it was interesting. He told us this week that it's more mental for him. He said, you know, when I can squat five or 600 pounds and I can put all that weight on my back, I do that in the game. I think of myself in the game. If I put the game weight on my shoulders, my teammates weight on my shoulders, I know that my legs can handle it. So it's as much physical and mental for his weightlifting prowess. You saw that physicality on his touchdown run earlier in this half. Second and seven. Here he is on the other side and unable to escape Idowu. Well, that's a heck of a play by Idowu. I mean, even if he couldn't get him on the ground by himself, he held him up long enough until some other white jerseys got there. This is no easy assignment to tackle this guy one-on-one -on -one in space. Now, Dowu did an outstanding job. Big third down play right here for the pit defense all of a sudden. Third and 11. Time for McSorley. Great effort to stay with it with Deshaun Hamilton. Brother. Wow. Tremendous effort. This ball thrown from the left hash shows you the arm strength of Trace McSorley to the right sideline. Taps it with one. Does he secure the catch before that ball is inbound? That was a heck of an effort by Hamilton. And you get the snap off, so the play subsequent to that is in the books, and it's a tackle for loss by Dowu again. They loss of five there. Hamilton with his third catch of the ball game. One of the real great stories on this Penn State football team. It's a, a mature guy who's had a Real impact on his family. He sure has. His older brother, Darius, played a huge role. His brother's autistic. Both his parents active duty Marines when he was growing up. Mother survived breast cancer. And he was so helpful with his autistic brother. Second and 15. McSorley near side this time for Tompkins. Put Odowu in a, in a little bit of a bind there. He was the underneath coverage, but he had two receivers. And he chose the wrong one to get under that route. And McSorley hit Tompkins for the nice completion. Just like that after the third down conversion. Penn State right inside of the 50-yard line again. Gesicki has been quiet. Was very much a factor in the first half. Hasn't had a ball thrown at him here. They throw to him this time, but he was covered by Zeiss, who doesn't let go. I've been pretty impressed with how Pitt has tackled these guys in the open field. You know, in, in training camp nowadays in college football in August, you just don't do very much live tackling. You can't. You can't worry about injuries and depth, and so you just don't get much live tackling. And I think that they've done a pretty nice job tackling some dangerous, elusive guys in space today. I'm sending the punt team out here. Always got to be aware of a fake here if you're Pittsburgh. 
this much yardage needed. Pinned. Well done. But you know what? That's what you have to do if you're the returner Henderson. He made that mistake earlier. It was the right bounce for Penn State, but you don't want to feel that thing inside your five. The bounce worked. He did his job right, too. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart. Save money. Live better. And in part by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart. Save money. Live better. And in part by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. So how do you go from about 12 stories above 106,000 people quickly down to the field to be honored at halftime? That's how you do it. But let me add this. Blackledge leaves the booth. He actually took a right because he was thinking about going to get ice cream. They yeah. got to remind you that you're being honored in front of 106K. But how many press boxes have homemade ice cream? I only I know mean, two. It's a true story. In Starkville, Mississippi. Well, I mean, been playing for half a year, and you're going to get ice cream. That's hot. Hold on. we got to honor you. Hold. I forgot about Food was I'm me. a food guy, man. So pinned back is the pit offense as Max Brown had to come out, close up that cut. Here's the shovel pass. It's an incomplete, it's pass. An incomplete pass. That's the yep. benefit of running it. That if it falls innocuously, no worries. Well, they made a lot of mileage with this play in their scoring drive. That one was a little bit on the back shoulder intended for Darren Hall. It falls to the ground, and that is the beauty of running an option that way. It's an incomplete pass instead of a backward pass. Under six minutes to play, and it is awfully loud with Pitt backed up. After Gilligan pinned that punt for Penn State. Is that a safety? Mighty close. Yep. Yes, it is. The Penn State defense. Marcus Allen, his 11th tackle of the game, and scored two with it. Now, unlike a touchdown, the ball has to be completely out of the end zone, and what a tackle by Marcus Allen. The right tackled Jared Jones-Smith, not able to get a piece of him. And that's what Marcus Allen does. You know, as a safety, and he's played a lot of ball here, zero career interceptions, but he is a big-time tackler. And two more points for the Nittany Lions. Big play on the safety. One of the players we got to visit with yesterday, James Franklin said he's always smiling and dancing. We asked... Marcus, what's your favorite part of being on the Penn State football team? What do you like the most about the experience? He said, just celebrating with my boys in the locker room after game, watching everybody kind of get loose, dancing. And Holly, who did he tell us were the best dancer and the worst dancer on this football team? Well, he did say that he is the best dancer, unquestioned, but he said Mike Kosicki is the worst, but Mike Kosicki's doing his dancing on the field with the scoring touchdown. There's Saquon Barkley dancing his way on the return of the free kick. Let's look at our Pacific Life game summary. Flags coming in. I think these guys are starting to understand yeah. the rivalry that was absent for 16 years, aren't they? Well, that was a frustration play by Avante Maddox on the sideline. One of the leaders of this pit defense. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 14 of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Just a late push, the last push. I mean, it really was not much, but it was unnecessary. And when you do it on the opponent's sideline, never a real good idea. It has been tagged with six penalties. Penn State won, as we said, the Pacific Life game summary. As the day started with the All-America tight end, Mike Gesicki. He had 
two first quarter touchdown receptions from Trace McSorley, one of the top NFL prospects in all of college football is Kosicki. And the Penn State defense has continued to do their job. Moments ago, we saw Marcus Allen with the safety. And that's how we have arrived at 30 to 14. And that is batted at the line of scrimmage as that was Keyshawn Camp. You know, amazingly, you don't see that happen too much with Trace McSorley. He's listed as six foot, and that's probably the, the, the max that his height is. He might even be a hair under that. But he does a good job of moving in the pocket and finding throwing angles that you just don't see him get too many passes knocked down. Yeah, maybe scraping six foot yeah. tall in the media well, guy. Well, his hair, his hair is exactly. kind of big. So that, that would make him six foot. Says far too many people to count the number who told him he was too small to play at the highest level. But he can do that. He is a gamer. Yeah, yeah that's a big reason why he signed with Coach Franklin. He said, this guy believed in me to be a quarterback. He was committed to Vanderbilt when Coach Franklin was there, and then he flipped his commitment and followed him here. Yeah, and I, I tell you, when I watch these two guys play, they just remind me so much of each other. They're similar in stature. They're similar in the way they play the position. They're both kind of got a chip on their shoulder, been told by a lot of people they were too short to play, not big enough to be a big-time quarterback, and uh, but they both are big-time quarterbacks. And I think Trace being more involved in the running game this year is going to be big for Penn State. Here's Kosicki with a block out in front from Hamilton, splitting those receivers who were finding work downfield, Tompkins and Hamilton. Really impressed with the way the wide receivers block for this Penn State offense. Doing a nice job. Again, when you got a guy like Barkley, you got a guy like Kosicki, you turn a five-yard catch into a 19-yard gain by the way you block downfield. That's everybody doing their job. And into the game comes number two, Tommy Stevens, number two receiver to the near boundary side, now in motion. He's the backup quarterback, so look for something there. And there he is, Stevens, as he gets maybe a half yard. Now listen, this is not something out of the ordinary for Penn State. It's not a cute package. He is a legit playmaker they want on the field. Yeah, he is their backup quarterback, but he's such a good athlete, and he's big, that they'll use him to run their normal offense but he gives them the ability to throw the football also, and you can still run trick plays as well as your base offensive plays. So he stays on the field. Up here in the slot. Tommy Stevens, big six foot five quarterback from Indianapolis. And meanwhile, getting it down to the six yard line is Saquon Barkley. And a timeout will be called by Pitt. Timeout, Pittsburgh, their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Tonight on ESPN, it is a good one. Number 13, Auburn, against number three, Clemson. Jared Stidham in that Auburn offense. As you said, watch out for these defensive lines. Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, and Clemson. That is going to be an electric atmosphere down there in Death Valley. And I love these kind of games early yeah. in the season. Yeah. That can really define a team. Yeah, the college football playoff uh, has a lot to do with that. Teams are playing better non-conference opponents, big-time opponents. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I know there's a lot of hype around Jarrett Sidham, but he has actually spent the entire summer working out with Sam Darnold, the USC quarterback that many think is a Heisman hopeful. They spent time training together down in California with Jordan Palmer. I was able to go to an Auburn practice and watch Jarrett in person, and I do think the hype is real. He looked really good, has put in some good work in the offseason. He'll be tested tonight against Clemson in that defensive front. Only Holly Rowe on <laughs> August 1st would live a seminar early to turn to me and say, hey, Auburn's got to practice. I can make the drive and get there <laughs> and that's how you get information and backstories like that third and three Nick Sorley as he pumps the way of Hamilton and it'll be fourth down yeah he was looking for Gasicki that time Pitt had him covered in the end zone and he had to throw the football away you know for this Pitt defense it doesn't get any easier they have to play Oklahoma State next week. 
And Mason Rudolph in that offense, every bit as explosive as this one. I was watching Oklahoma State last night. James Washington is an absolute terror against defensive backfields. So Tyler Davis on for the 24-yard attempt. Young man who at one point earlier in his career made 18 straight field goals, a school record, adds more to this Penn State lead. is Mike Weber is expected to play tonight. Of course, he was slotted to be the starting running back for Ohio State. Will you look at that number that was just posted? They are listing the attendance here today at 109,898. Officially, they say capacity is 106,572, and they're putting out the number of 109,898 to see the Pitt and Penn State rivalry dance their dance again. Thirty-three to fourteen. Of course, it was different a year ago. Of course, Pitt had the great James Conner, one of the great players in Pitt history. He's off to the NFL, playing right there for the Steelers. And the cancer survivor with our fearless cancer fighter. What a moment that was! The Disney Spirit Award with our Holly Rowe. And now, welcome to the world, Conner, spelled the same way. As Pitt's associate AD, E.J. Borghetti, and his wife, Lauren, welcomed little Connor Borghetti. They said he arrived with such speed and authority, we had to name him after our favorite running back. He was born this Tuesday, and he came in at 9 pounds, 14 ounces. He is going to be a Pitt Panther, folks. Big boy is Connor, spelled the same way. Holly? Well, I actually checked in with James Conner. He does know that that baby was named after him, and he said, what an honor. He was so thrilled. James is watching the game today from his hotel room in Cleveland. He is getting ready to play in his very first NFL game against the Cleveland Browns. And there's a special relationship that James and Holly have. And this past July, this was the tweet that went out when James Conner had the top-selling jersey in the entire NFL. Wow. Connor Strong indeed. Of course, we think about James's inspiration, and we are constantly immensely proud and in awe of our sideline reporter and her continued fight against cancer. Holly, we love you for that. Max Brown's been a tough day against this Penn State team that's just got that swag, that it to it. Fourth ranked team in the country as Ben DiNucci will take over at quarterback here. And they run an inside screen with Arojo Lopes. Yeah, we knew what to expect from this Penn State offense, the firepower they had. I'm very, I was very impressed today with the Penn State defense. Even though they gave up some rushing yards, 291 yards for Pitt total offense, not very much. Very few big plays. They held them out of the end zone. And I just think even compared to the, what they looked like last year against Pittsburgh, this defense has come a long, long way. Danucci to the near side, and that's incomplete as Campbell had coverage on Flanagan. You think about Penn State as a contender in the Big Ten. Uh, can they repeat as Big Ten champions? Of course, everybody is talking about Ohio State and how talented they are. Michigan, we had them last week. Looked good in the opener, maybe not so good in their second game today against Cincinnati, but a very talented team. But this Penn State football team, they're complete. Fourth down here. Danucci is going to tuck it and try to run for it, and he gets it. Good physical athlete still yeah. breaking tackles as it was Bowen who had to ride him down. Yeah, Torrance Brown, the defensive end, was chasing from behind. It looked like he was going to catch him, and Danucci showed some speed. Watch number 19. He thinks he's going to get him. 
16-yard run. Actually, it was Shaka Tony number 18, not Torrance Brown number 19, that was giving chase. Ruarie is being helped off the field. You know, Ben DiNucci is a young man, quarterback who's in right now for Pitt. Didn't have an FBS offer until Pitt offered him. He was committed to play Ivy League ball at the University of Pennsylvania. And then he made the decision to stay at home with his only FBS offer. And you see his ability. Steps up, checks down underneath here. As he's able to get it again to a Rojo Lopes. As you mentioned, he made the competition in the summer for real. Made Max Brown better, made the competition better, made the position better. And he's showing some spark here with this pit offense. Remember when Max Brown got replaced last year, it was kind of a similar deal. Sam Darnold, they kind of felt, gave them a little bit more of a dual threat capability. And that was why they made the decision to go with Sam Darnold, and that paid off for USC as Darnold had a phenomenal year. Pat Narduzzi, he understands this isn't the same team as a year ago, that there's going to be adversity. That was an older team, an older team that went down to Clemson and beat them. This yeah. is a younger team, and he said to us yesterday, you wonder how they're going to react to certain situations. And this is obviously a very big task in this place against this team. Yeah. Last year, they were pretty much on equal footing with Penn State when it came to talent across the board on both sides. This year, Penn State has the upper hand. They've got more seasoned, talented players. Danucci, as he's able to get it to Wea. Jester Wea doing a good job of fighting for that football against Campbell. Well, you start to believe when you're a team like Penn State that finished up the way they did last year is a good run now this time by Moss. As they're coming up on a minute to play. But to think where they were a year ago with the 42 to 39 loss to Pitt. And of course, then the clobbering by Michigan still right. took place. And then came the streak. The moment against Ohio State last October 22nd. The great run with the comebacks, including the Big Ten championship game, the thrilling Rose Bowl, the emergence of these offensive playmakers as national stars. You walk a little differently. Yeah. You got that confidence. You know, I was talking to one of my buddies on the, on the staff, Terry Smith, who played at Penn State, was a three-year starting wide receiver for Penn State, was a very successful high school coach at Gateway High School near Pittsburgh. And he said, you know, it just it, it just started to change. And now when we step on the field, it's like Penn State football players, well, you, well, you expect them to step on the field. They've got a little swagger, they expect to win, they've got confidence. There's a pass and a catch from Danucci to Wea as Pitt maybe looking to Tack something on the board here at the end. First and goal as Nucci getting some extended work. This is good work for Danucci. Not necessarily meaning that they are going to make a quarterback change, but this is this is not mop-up duty. If they're trying to score, they're being uh, aggressive, even though Penn State has some backups in their lineup up front. They still have their main line secondary and linebackers in against the backup quarterback. Danucci to the end zone and batted away and was off the shoulder pads of Chris Clark. Young man who transferred here from UCLA. Things didn't work out there. He was considered the top tight end recruit in the nation when he first went to UCLA. Came out of a prep school in Connecticut, Avon Old Farms. Same school that produced Princeton baseball player Christopher Davis, the son of our <laughs> college game day host, Reese Davis. She pulls it, being chased from behind, and he will have to slide out of bounds as Haley was coming in hard.
Brown started the game. Danucci had to come in when Brown's helmet came off. Scored a touchdown in his first play in the game at a two-point conversion. And Penn State cranked it up one more time. Now mop-up duty of looking to Could be finish with something. Spot for one of those shovel passes. Haven't seen one for a minute. Instead, he's wrestled down by Koa Farmer. Timeout, Pittsburgh, their third and final timeout of the half. So they will use the timeout here. Hey, kick off your week one NFL Sunday with ESPN. We've got the new time, and we've got the new team. And it is headlined by Samantha Ponder, as we wish Sam well. And the gang with Sunday NFL Countdown coming to you at 10 a.m. Eastern. Well, among the college football storylines today was the sensational performance by the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Lamar Jackson. Todd, he went for 525 total yards <laughs> and six touchdowns against UNC. Shea Patterson in a win. Hey, let me tell you, I know what's going on at Ole Miss. They still got a lot of talent yeah. on offense. And Alabama, business as usual. Jalen Hurts with 282 total yardage and three touchdowns in a win against Fresno. This guy here, Saquon Barkley, when it was time to go to the next level, he did it in the second half. Touchdown run and a touchdown reception. Fourth and goal. Danucci after the timeout. He fumbles the ball as he was going down there, but it wasn't going to matter. Should have just slung it to the end zone and hope for the best. You know, Pat Narduzzi calling the timeout there on fourth down, wanting to get a score there. He knows about the rivalry, says this is a respect thing. Said, when I was on Michigan State coaching all those days, we always felt Michigan didn't respect us. Said, same thing here, looking for a little respect. I'll tell you, they respected them last year with the win. That was 42-39 then. This is a much different story and a much different Penn State team. Yeah, this is a, a Penn State team that knows who they are. When these teams met a year ago, Penn State didn't really know what their identity was on either side of the ball. It took a few more weeks after that that they know who they are now. There was a lot of offensive power in this game. We were referring to the Q quotient. We had a lot of guys with the Q out there as Penn State will take it 33 to 14. Pitt had the two cues of Quadre and Quadre, Olison and Henderson. Needed big days out of them. Needed big sparks to stay with Penn State. But the other cues, Saquon, Bar Saquon Barkley went for 133 total yards and two touchdowns. And he's standing by with Holly. Well, Saquon, this game had stalled a little bit in the second half. You started to touch the ball more. How were you able to start making an impact? Uh, we felt that we can get um, get on the edge on these guys, and uh, Joe Mo and those guys do a great job in the second half of game planning and seeing what we got to fix for the second half. And the whole line and wide receiver did a great job blocking the perimeter, and we were able to gas them a little bit on the outside. You're talking about Joe Moorhead, and after that nice reception for a touchdown, you came over and you grabbed him by his shirt like this. I thought you were going to hurt him. What were you saying to him? Uh, I was saying thank you for trusting me. Uh, I, asked, I asked for that play, and uh, when you ask for that play, you got to win your one-on-ones. That's something that we really focus here at Penn State. Uh, so you yourself to the standard, and when you get one-on-one -on -one chance, win the one-on-ones, and I was able to do so there. Trey did a great job uh, putting the ball in the money. The O-line did a great job blocking. We're able to get an end zone. I think the most excited I saw you all day, though, was with the safety. You were dancing on the sideline for your defense. How did they show up today? Uh, defense is tremendous. Uh, that's why, that's why we are what we are, the team we are. We have a great offense and a great defense, and we go against each other at camp and every day in practice and get each other better. Uh, they did a great job for us every week. Uh, that's what they do. It's a standard. Uh, Cabinda, Marcus, and those guys, those guys. But Marcus making a big play. That's my boy. That's my teammate. That's my brother. So I'm going to get excited for anyone who make a big play. All right. Well, he's right behind you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. As Coach Franklin says, he's an even better person than he is a player. And he's one heck of a player. Some feel maybe the best in all of college football. 193 all-purpose yards 
as Penn State, fourth-ranked team in the country, takes care of business 33-14. to Oklahoma, Ohio State will be coming your way on ABC, but time to send it to the studio with Kevin, Mack, and Booger McFarland. So long from State College.